Welcome to Anime Lore Unveiled. If you're a fan of anime and love diving deep into the lore of your favorite shows, you're in the right place. We take you on a journey into the heart of your favorite worlds, unraveling the mysteries and exploring the unseen depths. Today we're setting course for a realm where the clash of swords and the roar of beasts are drowned by the mystical hum of magic. A universe where the power of spells shapes societies, dictates power structures, and stirs age-old rivalries. We're talking about the realm of Goblin Slayer. But before we plunge into this magical universe, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you won't miss out on any of our thrilling journeys. And remember, every click fuels our magical journey, so don't hesitate to share our videos with your fellow anime enthusiasts. Now strap in as we delve into the intricate world of Goblin Slayer and its magical races. Let's embark on this enchanting adventure. In a world where swords clash and monsters roam, one force stands above all, magic. Welcome to the realm of Goblin Slayer, a universe teeming with diverse races, each harnessing the mystical power of magic in their own unique ways. From the human spellcasters to the long-lived elves, the stout dwarves to the fearsome lizardmen, every race wields magic to tip the scales in their favor. This omnipresent force doesn't just manifest as dazzling spells and enchantments, it's a core element that shapes societies, dictates power structures, and even stirs age-old rivalries. Magic in Goblin Slayer isn't just about throwing fireballs or summoning creatures. It's a complex and integral part of life, deeply woven into the fabric of every race's culture and identity. So, which race wields the strongest magic? Let's embark on a journey to find out. Humans, a race as diverse in magic as they are in appearance. In the world of Goblin Slayer, Humans are not just the most populous race, but also the most diverse when it comes to magical abilities. They may not have the longevity of elves or dwarves, but what they lack in years they make up for in their versatility and adaptability. Let's take a look at some of the series' most powerful human wizards. There's the Priestess, a young but highly skilled cleric who uses miracles which are a form of divine magic. Her abilities include creating a protective barrier, casting a blinding light, and even resurrection. She's an example of how humans can harness the divine to wield powerful magic. Then there's the wizard boy, a youthful mage with a knack for arcane magic. He's been seen casting spells that can summon massive fireballs, create illusions, or even manipulate time. His magic is more about control and manipulation, demonstrating the breadth of human magical abilities. But it's not all about raw power. The sword maiden, a former gold-ranked adventurer, uses her magic subtly and strategically. She's a testament to the human capacity for strategy and cunning, showing that magic isn't just about brute force but also about how it's used. And let's not forget the enigmatic witch, a spellcaster with an affinity for enchantment magic. Her abilities allow her to influence the minds of others, proving that human magic can also delve into the realms of the psychological. However, human magic isn't without its limitations. Humans lack the natural affinity for magic that some races possess, so they must rely on scrolls, grimoires and other tools to cast spells. Their shorter lifespans also mean they have less time to master their abilities compared to the long-lived races. But these weaknesses have never stopped humans. They have shown time and again their capacity for innovation, using their tools and resources to level the playing field. They've also shown a remarkable ability to learn from other races, incorporating their magical techniques into their own repertoire. Despite their short lifespan, Humans have proven to be potent magic users. They may not be the strongest race in terms of raw magical power, but they are certainly one of the most versatile and adaptable. Elves and Dwarves, two races with a history as old as the gods themselves. Let's delve into their magical prowess and the ancient enmity that exists between them. In the world of Goblin Slayer, elves are known for their elongated ears, long lifespans, and a deep connection to nature. This connection imbues them with a unique proficiency in magic that is both subtle and powerful. Their magic often manifests in the form of enchantments and illusions, allowing them to bewitch their enemies or even alter the very fabric of reality. However, their magic is also intrinsically tied to their life force, meaning that excessive use can lead to physical exhaustion or even death. This is a double-edged sword that adds a layer of vulnerability to their otherwise formidable abilities. On the other hand, dwarves with their stout stature and a life lived underground have a knack for working with metal and stone. This is reflected in their magic as well. 
Dwarven magic is practical, robust, and grounded. It often revolves around enhancing physical strength, manipulating earth and stone, and forging magical weaponry. This utilitarian approach to magic makes dwarves formidable opponents in battles. However, their magic lacks the subtlety and versatility of elven magic, which can be a disadvantage in certain situations. The enmity between elves and dwarves is as old as the gods themselves. This animosity stems from their conflicting views on magic and life. Elves view dwarves as crude and unrefined, while dwarves see elves as arrogant and aloof. This mutual disdain has sparked countless conflicts over the ages. Despite their differences, both races have a deep respect for magic and its potential. Their long lifespans allow them to hone their magic to a level that humans can only dream of. This coupled with their unique approaches to magic, makes them formidable races in the world of Goblin Slayer. Their long lifespans allow them to hone their magic to a level that humans can only dream of. From the monstrous lizardmen to the divine gods, magic takes on many forms. Diving into the beastly and divine, we find a wide array of magical abilities. Lizardmen, reptilian in form and long-lived, are known for their unique magical abilities. Their magic is deeply rooted in the natural world, with their shamans often drawing power from the elements and the spirits of the earth. This gives them a range of magical abilities, from manipulating the elements to summoning spiritual entities. Then we have the Padfoots, an incredibly diverse race of beast-like humanoids. Their magic, much like their physical appearance, is varied and unique to each tribe. Some Padfoots may have control over shadows, others might communicate with animals, and some may even possess transformative abilities. This wide array of magic is a testament to their adaptability and the diverse environments they inhabit. Next, we have the Rias, meadow-dwelling folk with pointed ears. Their magic is often understated, but incredibly potent. They are known for their healing abilities and their innate connection to the earth. Rias may not possess the flashiest of magical abilities, but their subtle control over life and growth is something truly fascinating. Finally, we reach the gods. These divine beings wield magic on a scale incomparable to the other races. They bestow blessings and curses, manipulate fate, and hold dominion over life and death. Their magic is intertwined with the very fabric of the world of Goblin Slayer, shaping reality according to their whims. But it's not just about the raw power. Each race's magic is a reflection of their culture, their environment, and their beliefs. It's a tool for survival, a weapon for combat, and a means to connect with the world around them. The diversity of magic in these races is a testament to the vastness of the world of Goblin Slayer. So who stands above all? Which race is the strongest uncontested regarding magic? As we've seen, the world of Goblin Slayer is teeming with a myriad of races, each possessing unique magical abilities. Humans, with their versatility and adaptability, have shown a capacity for a wide range of magic. Their spells, however, are often less potent compared to the more specialized races. Elves, the children of the forest, are renowned for their affinity with nature and elemental magic. Their spells of wind and water are breathtakingly powerful and beautiful. Dwarves, on the other hand, favor earth magic, their spells as solid and unyielding as the mountains they call home. Yet the enmity between these two races often means their magical prowess is used against each other, reducing their overall effectiveness. The Lizardmen, with their intimidating visage, command a primal raw power that is both fearsome and awe-inspiring. Their magic, much like their physical form, is stark and unrefined, but brutally effective. Padfoots, with their diverse beast-like features, show an array of magical abilities as varied as their appearance. However, their lack of unity often undermines their potential. The diminutive Rias, despite their size, shouldn't be underestimated. Their magic may not be as flashy as some, but it is delicate and precise like the meadows they inhabit. Finally, the gods' divine beings with unfathomable power influence the world of adventurers, bestowing blessings, curses, and much more. Their magic is undoubtedly the most potent, but it is also the most unpredictable. So after weighing the strengths and weaknesses, who stands at the pinnacle? It's hard to dispute the raw, uncontested power of the gods. Their divine magic, while capricious, is undeniably the most potent. However, the elves and dwarves, with their specialized and highly refined magic, are not far behind. But remember, power is not just about strength, but also about how it is wielded. The strongest magic isn't necessarily the most effective or the most beneficial. It's not always about who can cast the biggest spell, 
but who can use their magic most wisely. In the world of Goblin Slayer, the true power lies not in the magic itself, but in the hands of those who wield it. Now, we turn the discussion to you. It's time to bring your insights into the mix. We've traversed the magical landscape of the Goblin Slayer universe, from the human realms to the divine domains, from the enigmatic elves to the stoic dwarves, and from the beastly padfoots to the reptilian lizardmen. We've analyzed their magical prowess, their strengths and weaknesses, their rivalries and their alliances, but the magical world of Goblin Slayer is vast and complex, with many layers yet to be explored. So what's your take? Do you think we've hit the nail on the head with our analysis of magical strength in Goblin Slayer? Or perhaps you believe there's a race we've overlooked, or a magical aspect we've underestimated? Maybe you have a theory about the gods and their divine influence on magic. Do you agree with our analysis? Or do you have a different perspective? Share your thoughts and let's continue the discussion. Before we wrap up, don't forget to subscribe to Anime Lore Unveiled. We're your one-stop destination for deep dives into your favorite anime worlds. We thrive on your insights and perspectives, so be sure to leave a comment below. Do you have a theory we've missed? An overlooked character you think deserves more attention? Or perhaps you want to challenge our analysis? All thoughts, theories, and insights are welcome in our enchanted community. And remember to Chidori the like-like button. You are an integral part of this magical journey. Thanks for joining us, and until next time, stay enchanted with Anime Lore Unveiled.